going on, everybody? It's Mr. Gustin again. I'm not in the physics classroom, but I am in a room where we're going to do physics. So here's the deal. Today in class, we did the ballistic pendulum lab, and that's where we had that fancy device, that long-range launcher that we shot into a pendulum, and we predicted the angle it was launched to. Let's break it down over here right now. Here's how it started. I'm going to show you a couple different uh, spots in this problem, but initially, we had the long-range launcher on a spring loaded up like this there was a pendulum sitting right here waiting to be moved a certain angle okay this is the first spot the next spot was uh the launch and the collision so now i've got this going on here pendulum is here collision it had been released from its spring pushed out and moving in this direction right before it starts to tick and then finally we have this launcher here and we have this pendulum raised up with the ball inside. Here's the initial zero, and we were looking for this angle theta. And that was the challenge. The challenge was what angle does this thing sweep out after it has been launched from a three-click position? This was kind of our, um, our weird or, or interesting uh, problem today. And this is called a ballistic pendulum. So what did we start with? We started with the K value of the spring. We said the K value for the spring is 614 newtons per meter. And then we took some measurements. We said that's all we're going to know, and we'll get some measurements, but not a lot of measurements, some measurements. Uh, and so we got a measurement. We called that measurement R for the length of the pendulum. We also got a measurement mass for the ball and a measurement mass for the pendulum. We measured these things um, just so that we had them as we went ahead and calculated uh, for the angle at the end. Let's see how we broke this thing down. Uh, again, this is another scenario where we end up doing a uh, energy into momentum into energy and kind of solving things using our various physics tools. Okay? So first things first, I look at this problem over here. We're going to break this down. We can call this like part A. We can call this part B. Or we can call this part C. And so when I think about uh, part A, I think about an object that is loaded up on a spring with a lot of potential spring energy. And eventually that spring is released, and once that spring is released, it's moving. We have kinetic energy that leads to the collision of the marble and the pendulum. So I can go ahead and write my equation. 1 half k x squared is equal to 1 half mv squared. And so when I think about maybe there's more data I should have gathered, maybe I should have gathered the x for the spring as well. How far was it compressed? And so we go ahead and we do this. I can break this down and say, all right, um, I need the velocity of the marble before the collision so that I can then analyze the collision and the effects after the collision. So uh, I can go ahead and get rid of these. Let's just do a quick algebra problem, right? We can derive an expression for this. The one half goes away and I'm left with kx squared over the mass. And the square root of that is the velocity of the um, ball before it leaves the launcher. This is what I want to find from part A. The velocity of the ball leaves the launcher. Why do I need that? I need that because I know in part B there's going to be a collision. I know that the marble is going to collide with the pendulum, and there's going to be conservation of momentum between the marble and the pendulum system itself. So I need to make sure that I have initial velocity so I can go ahead and, and, and solve this uh, example. So in part B, I'm looking at a collision where the momentum initially is equal to the momentum finally, and that's between the ball and the pendulum system. Okay, so initially the momentum is the momentum of the ball. So I'm going to need the speed of the ball initially. This is initially from A. We can call it velocity of the ball at point A. After the collision, notice the ball is stuck inside of the pendulum. So when that happens, uh, the pendulum has a mass of the ball plus a mass of the pendulum, and it has a new velocity. We'll call this velocity of the um, pendulum ball at point B. PB, big B, this is the velocity here, okay? And this is really what I need eventually because this is what the speed of the uh, this is the speed at which the pendulum rotates upward, swings upward 
And if I'm trying to figure out how far it swings, I'm going to need to know how fast it's going initially. So I'm looking for this velocity down here. Let's derive an expression. Uh, it looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward. Mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball that I got from A divided by the mass of the ball plus the mass of the pendulum. That's all equal to the velocity of the pendulum ball system at point B. So I've carried this variable over, used it over here, and now I'm going to need to carry this variable over into part C. And part C is where it gets a little bit confusing, but essentially what I see here is this object swings up. It's moving down here with a lot of kinetic energy, and it swings up. And I ask uh, students in class, I said, well, what causes it to slow down? And they say gravity causes it to slow down. If gravity causes it to slow down, then the kinetic energy is transformed into gravitational potential energy. And I can go ahead and write a conservation of energy expression for part C. I've got my kinetic energy at B post-collision, and I've got my gravitational potential energy at point C as it comes to a stop on its swing. And so I can say, all right, there's 1 half mv squared equals mgh. And what is h? h is the weird one. If down here is 0 meters, that's the 0 height, then the height that it swings to up here is going to be h. That distance there, from 0 up to h, that's the height it swings. Okay, So this distance here is known as h. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and solve for h. Mass falls out. H is over here. I can bring this over. I've got 1 half uh, times v squared over g equals h. Now, what v is that? That's v times p, or v pbv, right? Uh, velocity of the pendulum ball system at point b. That's that velocity there. So I need that again to find the height. Once I have found the height, this feels like my answer. It feels like I've done this. It feels like I'm like, check, good to go. I've got the length of the pendulum, which we call r, and I have h, which we, uh, is the height. I can go ahead and do some inverse trig here to find so uh, the angle. But that's not quite the case, because if I look here, the sides of my triangle are not h and r. If I look here, this angle is created between this leg of a triangle and this leg of the triangle. R is definitely the hypotenuse of this triangle, but H is not the other one. I know that this length, which was initially the pendulum's length, is R. So that itty bitty piece up here, if this whole length is R, and the height between the ground and the peak of the swing is H, then this little piece right here is R minus H. So if I take my triangle over here, what I end up finding is that the hypotenuse is R, and this is R minus H. So to find my angle, I'm going to use a cosine function where it's R minus H over R, and I'll do some inverse trig, and so theta is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of R minus H over big R. This is what I end up with. I go ahead and I find it, and based on our measurements in class, it should be anywhere between 55 and 70 degrees, based on what your measurements were. And some of us had really good measurements, and some of us had some not so good measurements, so it just depends on what our measurements were uh, with our meter sticks and rulers. So this is what I end up with. This is our classic ballistic pendulum problem. And again, it kind of shows us that energy and momentum are so closely related, and that energy and momentum are oftentimes used in conjunction with each other to solve some complex physics problems. As always, if you've got questions, drop it in the comments. Send me an email, but until next time, see ya!